These days, we take our tech everywhere we go. In our bags, in our hands and on our wrists. Even the rings we wear have gone digital. And for more people than ever, that means a shortcut to life-saving help in an emergency. This is on the way to being something that empowers people. I've sort of joked to people that my, my watch saved my life, but I think it did. <laughs> Amanda Faulkner never imagined her life could flip so fast. You, you feel numb, shocked. I'm really active. I eat well. I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. I barely drink, you know. I mean, you know, girl, golden girl for a healthy lifestyle. After being diagnosed with cancer last year, the 51-year-old had to rethink her life. And it's quite ironic because we were actually um, visiting Adelaide with a view to scoping it out as a place to live. Two weeks later, Amanda's new Apple Watch started sending her alerts. I thought the watch was faulty or that maybe the chip was more sensitive than my last one, so I kind of ignored it. Um, but over, over time, my, my resting heart rate was kind of creeping up day by day by day. And the watch was telling me, you know, you're trending differently. Something wasn't right. It went from my normal resting heart rate of 55, which I was always smug about because it was lower than his, um, to my resting heart rate never being less than 90. Amanda says if it wasn't for her smartwatch warning her, she may not be here today. My cancer is called acute myeloid leukaemia and acute means it comes on really quickly. And that's one of the nasty things about it because most people present with rather vague, non-specific symptoms that, you know, are easy to dismiss. She credits her watch's data for speeding things up with her GP. I actually whipped out my iPhone and sat down and, and showed her the graphs on the phone. And I think that really helped her take me more seriously than, you know, just another 50 odd year old woman who's going, I'm a bit hot and my heart's a bit high. And if it wasn't for the fact that she had a bit of knowledge and was prepared to go to the GP, you know, a day later, and Amanda wouldn't be sat next to me now. And Amanda's not alone. Medical experts are seeing new cases daily where smartwatches help pinpoint a problem. More and more they're creeping into our everyday clinical practice. Professor Gary Jennings is a cardiologist and chief medical advisor at the Heart Foundation. Some people just, uh, just wave their wrist in front of us. Uh, some people bring in uh, printouts. Some people are able to share it electronically or a screenshot. Professor Jennings says it's only a matter of time before the tech takes over. I think it's very important if people have got symptoms as well as a warning from their device that they do something about it, that they go and see their doctor. On the whole, I see these as a force for good. When it comes to smartwatches and fitness trackers, we're spoiled for choice. Australians are getting much more interested in what their health and wellness journey is and they need a tool of some form to keep them, you know, to give them data, to give them information and to keep them on track. Samsung Australia's Head of Wearable Devices, Kylie Mason. We're kind of trying to offer something for every level of both fitness and design for consumers. But where to start? Both Apple and Samsung smartwatches offer similar features with bright screens. The entry-level devices start at around $400. If you're after the latest health tech but don't want the big display, you may have time for Withings. Their range hides the flashy features and start at $799. High-tech wristwatches are one thing. Now smart rings are circling the market. Ultra Human Air is is the latest to make its way to Aussie retailers. Priced at nearly $600, it monitors your sleep and can even measure your stress levels. Compare that to Samsung's Galaxy Ring starting at $700 and the Aura Ring at $549, add on a monthly subscription fee to that. Many of these smart wearables also alert you if you've had a fall or are stranded. Mate, I'm so far out. I can't see the beach. I'm calling for my other watch. In July last year, Byron Bay's Rick Shearman managed to call for help using his Apple Watch after being pulled out to sea. While wearable tech has carved a path for the future, it certainly isn't for everyone.
we do have a large number of people that we you know, in the field call the worried well um, and we don't want to worry them any more than they need to. This is coming and we've got to make sure that we learn how to use it effectively and, uh, and not scare people.